So as far as we know, PBRs really maintain detector and optimizer haven't been discussed in the literature thus far. So the question is, does it effectively decrease packet loss rate and their limited mobile network? So based on our experiment in, in real world, we found that the packet loss rate of, of BBR can reach up to 40%. So it means that uh, BBR needs some improvement and their limited mobile network. So based on our analysis of the soft code, uh, we will present the operational principle of BBR. We try to use two conditions to detect the limited mobile network. So the, the first condition is about the high tech loss condition. So you know, after the token has been placed, uh, packets will be dropped by the uh, limiter. So uh, this is why it had the first condition. And for the second condition, it requires a constant, constant throughput. You know, in the relimiting region, uh, the relimit is fixed, so that's why we have the second condition. And the, uh, the, the detection operates in sample interval, and sample interval starts with the packet loss, and the, the, uh, the length of the sample interval is larger than 4 RTP or smaller than 16 RTP. And if the two consecutive sample intervals satisfy the two conditions, then it seems it detects the relimiting. So the flow is classified as relimiting and the estimated relimit by the average value of the uh, of the two throughput of the two, of, of these two uh, sample intervals. And then the case the case number is for 40 rounds, and at the end of the 40 rounds, it reverts to non-relimit operations and it tries to detect relimiting again. So this is a periodical process. So uh, armed with BBRs, uh, armed with BBRs optimizer, why do we set it to perform very well and a really limited network? But based on our experiment, we found that it's not the case. Then see the tech loss rate of BBR and qubit. We can find that BBR tech loss rate can be much higher than qubit. And for some times, this uh, this tech loss rate can be three times larger than qubit. And uh, we can find that BBR and qubit can achieve a similar throughput, except for the 0 0.5 megabytes flow size. Because the 0 0.5 megabytes flow size is smaller than the token bucket, uh, and the token bucket size of approximately one, so it is not subject to relimiting at all. Uh, we have found that although they have the high packet loss, but they, they don't suffer from memory packet utilization. So the contraction is that the relimiting <coughs> pipe is very small. So it's only 10 kilobytes by uh, two megabits per second. Uh, uh, two, it's only 10 megabytes at, in operator one, and so qubit is very easy to set to the pipe, although packet loss reduces the mean of qubit. Uh, BBR is resilient to packet loss, so uh, it size even to two times of GBP, so they don't have a problem to utilize the memory. Um, based on our analysis of the BBR soft code, we, uh, we review that they have uh, three causes for the performance anomalies. So the first cause is called the relimit estimation error. So the key of EBR's optimizer <coughs> is to estimate the relimit and keep the system rate at the relimit. So if we can estimate the relimit correctly, then we can trust it without tech loss. And if it, uh, otherwise, it may utilize, underutilize the bandwidth or give the high tech loss. So let's see the, uh, this figure. It shows the CDF curve of the S, uh, S, average rate of the estimated relimit. So uh, we can see, especially for operator two and operator three, it can achieve a, a, a substantial estimation error. Uh, sometimes it is sometimes larger than 100%. And uh, you can see the maximum estimated relimit can be much, uh, many times of the real relimit. So we know that the overestimation can uh, make the uh, standard size too many packets, so the relimit drops the packets, so it will lead to the high packet loss. And the second cause is called the periodical bandwidth problem. Uh, PPR detects the relimiting by two conditions. Uh, it, it, it successfully detect, detects the relimiting and then it will keep the case rate for 40 rounds. And at, at, the, at the end of the 40 rounds, it enters non relimited operations, <coughs> and then it try to detect it again. So this is a periodical process. And let's see the blue shaded area. It represents the packet loss. 
So we can see why after the non reading operation periodically, uh, the uh, blue shaded error increased periodically. So it means that um, this periodical problem leads to a this periodical problem leads to a high pass loss rate. And the third cause is called the initial overshoot. The patient rate overshoot the real limit, causing handles of packet loss. And the reason why it has the initial overshoot is that before the transfer of this flow, the, the buckets are full of tokens, so um, the packets are low to transfer at full speed. So, uh, and uh, it's needs, it needs leads DBRs as a advanced estimator into reaching the uh, patient rate beyond the real limit among the token RP spaces. So uh, this is the third cause. And based on the previous cause, uh, we, we developed a modified uh, relimiting optimizer called MDR. You know, the first co component is called persistent relimiting detector. In short, it, it is PRD. The intuition of it is that, you know, based on our previous analysis, if I overshoot, if I uh, estimated, overshoot, overestimated the limit. So PRD can correct the overestimation if, uh, if the, if the uh, re estimation overshoot the real limit, the excess packets will be dropped. So if uh, PRD will perform a second uh, real limit estimation to correct the overestimation. And it can also avoid the periodical balance problem. So the algorithm runs like this. Uh, when it detects, when the DBR optimizer detects the relimiting, uh, and then it keeps the patient rate for 40 rounds, and at the end of 40 rounds, PLD kicks in to perform a second relimit estimation using packet analysis. So it considers the, uh, if there's some packet loss, then we will use this to, to perform a second relimit estimation. So it will correct the overestimation. And uh, after that, the BGR optimizer can detect the real limit again, and then also, uh, it also do a second estimation. If the refined, if the two refined blue zones are very similar, and the difference is very small, so it seems that it will keep the patient rate at, at the final estimation rate until full terminate. So by doing this, it will it reduce the packet loss uh, caused by the periodical balance problem because it keeps the patient rate so then we implement PRD into BGR to, to compare the performance of PRD with BGR, uh, with the or, original BGR. So the table shows the uh, shows the the, the table sh uh, shows the uh, shows the overshoot and undershoot percentage. We can find that PRD can indeed reduce the overshoot, especially for over the two and over the three. It can reduce uh, the overshoot percentage from 60% to only, uh, to nearly zero. And um, then we also consider the tech loss risk uh, and the blue zones. So let's see, uh, it can indeed reduce the tech loss risk. But uh, its blue zone is lower than DBR, especially for order two and order three. So the reason for it is that because it tips the balance to, it tips the balance to the underestimation. So that's why we propose another component called uptaker to correct for the underestimation. So once every 40 runs, if there's no packet loss, you know, it's the time to creep up the bandwidth by a factor of beta. And if the flow is sufficient long, the, uh, the patient rate will overshoot the real limit eventually, and it will fall back to the previous patient rate. And know that it will not roll back the patient rate even if there are packet losses in the prior PDP, because it's actually caused by the previous overshoot. <coughs> so if there's a packet loss, it will revert to the previous patient rate. Yeah, this is uh, our paper. And this is, uh, this two figure compare the uh, evolution of DBR and MDBR, PRD and Arcator. We can find that uh, with PRD, it, it, and DBR, MDBR does not have the periodical balance problem problem. And uh, if there's no kind of loss, our pacer can kick in to creep out the balance, uh, creep out the patient rate. And uh, with the previous two components, that still presents a known problem because the uh, little balance may drop below the real limit. You know, uh, for some, uh, for some, 
scenario, like the arrival of a new convenient for driving some of the downlines and novel condition deteriorations. So, it, uh, so that's why the proposed down heater is requires two, two consecutive faulty grounds. If, uh, if, if the catalog of two consecutive faulty grounds is not as a threshold, I think it's time to revert to non-realistic operations because maybe uh, the level condition changes. So it's revert to non-realistic operations. So if we want, if we just run catalogs below the flow to adapt to the new level conditions. But we emphasize that uh, this is the this is the initial design of this down heater. We call the current problem is that it requires a uh, considerable of time to trigger this. So we are looking into uh, another new uh, down heater to replace this. So this is the evaluation part. And th this is the evaluation of this this algorithm. So let's see when the company will start. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, blue shaded area. It increased dramatically. So this has a lot of increase dramatically because the down heater is reverse the non-related operations and after the company full ends, the updater continue to, to keep track of balance. And then it uh, yeah, this is the evaluation of this algorithm. We have reduced the main type of update from 15% to 4%. And the final component of this algorithm is called stable. So the reason why we, we introduced stable is that the problem of, of the shear expression is that the detection is precise take considerable time to complete. The shorter the flow, the less we can benefit from the optimization, and if the flow is so short, then so short uh, before the completion, uh, before the detection complete, it cannot benefit from the optimization anymore. So, and, uh, it hold, uh, and the substantial catalog at the beginning of the flow cannot be avoided. So that's why we, we, we introduce stable mechanism. And the stable mechanism is to retain that was formation where some materials flow to the plant and to optimize the sub subsequent flow to the same plant. And so we, we apply the stable PPC model to MDDR6. So whether the client is under relimiting or not, if it is under relimiting, it also stores the dictionary. So before the start of the second flow, it disappears the flow dictionary will directly be adopted. So, so it will, it will, uh, it will uh, avoid the initial overshoot the problem. So let's see. This is the second flow, and this is the and this is the first flow, and this is the second flow. We can call that at the beginning of the second flow directly uh, enter into the not we limit it directly enter into the limited operations. So it start uh, it it start the pacing. It start to pace it. It start the, it set the pacing rate according to the first flow. So it doesn't have the initial order to follow, right? So uh, so this is the stable mechanism. And let's come to the performance evaluation part. We we evaluate our algorithm in two test set, in two test forms. One is control test set, and the other is real world development. And the control test set is to con is to control the token pa bucket parameters and assess the fluid constant in different token bucket parameters. And currently, we have uh, five different configurations of token bucket. We can find that MBDR can achieve uh, the lowest echelon. And and it, uh, the proof of performance are very similar, so we, we don't want to show the proof of performance here. And, and uh, it means that it, the low technical fit achieved by PBR is not at the expense of the high, uh, at the expense of the lower throughput. So then it comes to the uh, real world uh, experiment. Uh, we can find that PBR can achieve a low, a lower technical fit than PBR, uh, especially in larger flow size. Uh, it can reduce over 80 percent compared to uh, compared to PBR in over two and over three, and it can uh, reduce over 50 percent compared to two in all three operators. But there's there's a problem as the flow size in decreases, the PBR flow rate increases significantly. So for flow size smaller than two megabytes, uh, the MBBR flow rate is similar to PBR. I say this is for higher than two bits. The reason is that it is related to PBR initial overshoot problem, and uh, initial overshoot behavior. And before relimiting can be detected, it will op operate exactly the same as PBR. So why that, that's why we have a similar uh, technology as PBR. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, this figure shows that it is related to, the head of three is related to the initial overshoot problem. 
problem of the data. So we, uh, we also measure uh, the average amount of data transfer before the linking could be detected. So it, uh, it shows that both are smaller than one megabyte are unlikely to benefit from timing graph. So that's why we introduce the simple mechanism to reduce, uh, to, to avoid this problem. But uh, I will show the, uh, the simple the performance in the following slide. But first, let's have a look at the good food performance of hybrid. Uh, we can find that uh, all three uh, protocols achieve achieve similar good food for uh, for flow size of one megabyte or lighter, except for the 0.5 megabyte flow size, because 0.5 megabyte flow size is smaller than 25, uh, the 25 size, so it, is, so it is not subject to the linking at all. So then let's have a look at the simple performance. You know, uh, the MDBR results, Christine has tell about uh, two megabyte data uh, transfer according to our measurement. So thereby limiting its effectiveness in shorter flow. So for the, so our experiment run, run, run like this. For the second, for the first flow, it will download eight megabyte flow. Then it will download the eight megabyte data. And after that, uh, it will store the data into the hash table. And before the starting, uh, at the beginning of the second flow, it will look up the hash table. And uh, it finds the entry seems that the bigger flow is, is, is uh, detected to be at the remaining limit. So it will uh, directly active the remaining operation. So the following the figure shows the, only shows show the performance of the second flow. We can find that uh, packet loss rates are all reduced to no more than uh, 1.5% in all test cases, <coughs> and they achieve no trade-off in good food performance. So um, let's summarize this, uh, this work. Uh, this work uncovers a new and pricing challenge. We found that the cubic and linear packet loss rate over millimeter for one hour which can incur significant bandwidth calls to service providers. And uh, that's why we develop MDBR and SMDBR to mitigate the packet loss with no trade-off in good food. And further work is required to develop a relimiting detector and optimizer for qubit and other potential CCP designs. And more performance evaluation are essential for these new modified uh, protocols. So that's why we uh, make this all open source in the GitHub. So thanks for listening um, uh, and questions. Thank you.